শুভ সন্ধ্যা আপনারা সবাই কেমন আছেন ফিজিও নিউজ টোয়েন্টি এর পক্ষ থেকে এক আমাদের যে চিফ এডিটর আছেন ডক্টর শামিম এবং আমি ডক্টর শান্তনু আপনাদের সবাইকে সুস্বাগতম জানাচ্ছি বিশেষ করে আজকে আমাদের সাথে আমার খুবই কাছের একজন বন্ধু এসছেন এবং উনি আমাদের ফিজিও নিউজ টোয়েন্টি ফোরেরই একজন সদস্য বাংলাদেশে উনি এসছিলেন দু হাজার সালে অনেক দিন হয়ে গেছে তো আসলে আবারও ওনাকে বাংলাদেশে ইলিশ মাছ খাওয়ার জন্য দাওয়াত করবো ভেবেছিলাম কিন্তু আসলে করোনার জন্য হচ্ছে না তো আমাদের সাথে প্রতিদিনের মতো প্রতিবারের মতো বা প্রতি সপ্তাহের মতো আমাদের সাথে বিশেষ করে রবিবারটা আমরা প্রোগ্রাম করে থাকি তো নলেজ শেয়ারিং কারণ এই করোনার সময় আসলে আমরা সেভাবে হাতে কলমে প্রশিক্ষণগুলো দেওয়ার সুযোগ পাচ্ছি না বা আয়োজন করার সুযোগ পাচ্ছি না তো সেই জন্যই আমরা তাদের মূল্যবান সময়টা আমরা ধার করে নিই এবং বিশেষ করে আমাদের কিছু কিছু বন্ধুরা আসলে কখনোই না করেন না তাদের প্রোগ্রাম থাকলেও তারা অনেক কষ্ট করে আমাদের সাথে সময় দেয় এটা আসলে অনেক বিশেষ পাওয়া এবং আমরা আসলে পিজি ইউনিভার্সিটি ফোর এর পক্ষ থেকে গর্বিত তো আমি আসলে পরবর্তীতে আমি ইংরেজিতে একটু ইন্ট্রোডাকশনে যাচ্ছি কারণ আমাদের সাথে প্রতিনিয়ত দশ থেকে পনেরোটা দেশের পার্টিসিপেন্টরা সবসময় অংশগ্রহণ করেন এবং তাদের সুবিধার্থেই আসলে বাংলা থেকে ইংরেজিতে যাওয়া ধন্যবাদ সবাইকে এবং সবাইকে মনোযোগ দিয়ে শোনার জন্য যারা বাংলাদেশের থেকে যুক্ত হচ্ছেন so thank you everybody and good evening and uh, today i will like to invite one of my great friend dr shoman jandar and he is a uh, is also a bengali because he is from west bengal but uh, now he is uh, now he is work, working as a associate professor in uh, that is uh, green park yes garden city university garden bangalore. city yes garden city university bangalore sorry and uh, he, he also he is uh, from there he is trying to get his phd so it's a nice uh, i think it's a great uh, way and great opportunity for him to uh, share his knowledge and by the by getting his uh, final destination and also he is my uh, best friend from a uh, very long time and he was with us in 2017 in bangladesh and he has given us such a wonderful four day hands on workshop on drainage so he has lots of his students in bangladesh so very uh, warm welcome and i think uh, next uh, one hour will be uh, he will going to be give us such a rocking knowledge sharing approach and dry needle is a very common approach in nowadays and um, uh, especially physiotherapy professional they are eager to learn this technique because uh, new concept always people are eager to learn and he is the master uh, i think in this field because already he has completed 70 hand like more than 70 hands on workshop all over the india and also bangladesh so i think he is he has a huge experience and last program we have we have more than 25 participants with us and that was a very challenging that time because uh, at that time it's a uh, more than three workshop also and that between that time and we had to struggle to uh, convince our participant and put our best effort to organize that and also he was the, there with us and always with me and his inspiration make me something like uh, uh, like i am also used to teach something so always his inspiration and his guide like guide thank you thank you sir and please uh, welcome to our winner and i think always you will be with us in future so now is time to for you over to you sir thank you good evening shubho shandha greetings from garden city my relationship with uh, shantanu go- dates back to the previous decade we had been together in kolkata we had been together in bangladesh bangladesh e giye okhan kar je otithi satkarer je riti tar somporke hands on experience hoyechilo ebong i was uh, uh, kind of overwhelmed with a kind of uh, appreciation warmth friendship that i had got from bangladesh 
so thank you very much uh, for for that hospitality and as we can see that that hospitality had been extended in virtual world also that's how i am here with shantanu thank you so much thank you for uh, call now uh, let us go to uh, the dry needling dyspora directly straight away and i'm sorry my phone is ringing i'll i'll just silent it for a moment give me a moment right so uh, can i uh, share my presentation and shall i shall i uh, share my presentation and talk about it okay uh, dr shamin he is on back, backstage so he will try to guide us but uh, if not you can continue on your speech okay all right so try to share, so, uh, share. so let me know if you are able to see my screen presentation in the meantime let me uh, talk about dry needling in general dry needling i came to understand dry needling after it had been couple of years after my uh, masters so uh, obviously what comes in the beginning you know when when i have just passed out uh, past my masters then i was uh, i was pretty happy with the kind of education i was having and i was pretty happy with the kind of results i was generating i was working in rajasthan udaipur in a in a private medical college hospital which later became an university and uh, then i was introduced to this concept of dry needling by by uh, literature and like everyone who hears about dry needling in the beginning i was kind of apprehensive i was having a kind of negative uh impression of this form of therapy uh, first of all uh, like we have been told that as a physiotherapist you you are doing a drugless therapy you are doing an external intervention we are not going inside the body and uh, and uh, limited to the outside outskirts of the body and uh, our no allows us or enables us to treat the patient without any side effects and all this and then you come to know about a therapy that has uh, that involves inserting needle to the patient's body so so first question that comes from came to me and and now also when i introduce dry needling to other people the first question they ask is is this physiotherapy number 1 number 2 are you as a physiotherapist allowed to insert needle inside the patient's body number 3 the next question that comes is does it really work or are we giving something to the patients amra patient ke thokachhi na to patient er gaye ekta needle dukiye di amra patient er kach theke shudhumudhu extra taka nichhi na to are we cheating the patients just to take some money from the patient are we are we doing uh, some intervention so these are the questions that any conscientious physiotherapist ekjon physiotherapist jar ektu khani vivek ache tara sob shomoy ei dhoroner proshno gulo kore ebong i also ask these questions to to uh, people who who introduced me hands on to dry needling and i actually went to to learn dry needling from Uh, from an uh, instructor one one uh, very senior lady from south africa and uh, i kind of uh, fought with her with all these questions and other questions and and it it took a lot of time and practice of myself on other patients as well as some some fellow physiotherapists to convince myself that this particular form of therapy is actually real therapy ete patient er actually improvement hoy and then uh, it it has its merits mane dry needling emon kichu korte pare jeta naki amra khali hate korte pari na so uh, from the position of antagonism i came to a situation where i understand okay dry needling works and then i i kind of was so amazed that dry needling is had had produced understandable observable measurable benefits to my patient that i tried to teach it i had always been a teacher during my masters and 
masters i used to teach unofficially in in uh, in ug of of uh, some colleges then after my masters my first job my second job my third job was was teachers in various universities various colleges in in west bengal in in rajasthan and and i was i i am till date associated with six different universities in various capacities in, in multiple times so so teaching comes i guess uh, i don't know if i say naturally but i enjoy the process so i i started to teach dry needling around unfortunately our present syllabus in in most of the countries not teach dry needling as as a primary form of therapy amader syllabus e amader we learn electrotherapy we learn exercise therapy we learn various form other forms of therapy till now dry needling is not incorporated in our syllabus there are certain exceptions for example in the present university where i am working in garden city university bangalore this this institution has been there for more than quarter of a century and uh, when we were allowed to make our syllabus so the present syllabus in masters we teach advanced form of manual therapy we teach uh, some portions of dry needling in in our syllabus but otherwise i teach dry needling the way i learned in hands on workshops and that's how i i uh, went to bangalore meet uh, met uh, shamim bhai and uh, shantanu to i used to know beforehand shantanu ke ami age theke jantam to uh, this is a brief history of how i learned and imbibed dry needling uh, is my screen visible shantanu ekbar bolte parben je screen ta dekha jacche kina then i will start my presentation আমার by and large the most common section of the population we think of acupuncture so so uh, that is our first impression of dry needling dry needling acupuncture same and then because acupuncture is chinese we think that dry needling has chinese origins and no offense to china but uh, our general understanding of many of the chinese goods as at least when we were small amader choto bela in our childhood we used to say oh this is chinese that means that uh, this may last for a lifetime or may get uh, may not last for a even day or two so there there is a very common joke in india i don't know apnara bangladesh e ei joke ta bolen kina je love is chinese if it lasts it lasts for a lifetime if it does not it it uh, gets like love is broken within within a week or two so we think that dry needling means acupuncture dry needling has its origin in china and then we cannot comprehend that a simple needle through the body without any medication can produce any any benefit so what we say we say dry needling probably is placebo because we think that it works so the so the patient thinks that it works and therefore it works and next we say that because it is placebo because there is no medicine because inserting the needle without a problem without any any uh, medicine or basic theory how is it going to help so we say the dry needling is un unscientific we feel like at the first impression it is something like a voodooism or something but still if we are introduced if you are introduced to the concept of dry needling we feel a little curious that what is this form of therapy that the other person is doing and the patients are saying that okay i went to that physiotherapist and that physiotherapist inserted some needle here and there and i felt good so let us break down these myths one by one first of all is it acupuncture 
Jan Doma hold the present uh, uh, one of the most written dry needling worldwide has written in its in his uh, in his text that from a physical therapy perspective trigger point dry needling has no similarities with traditional acupuncture other than the tool and what is the tool tool is the needle now if you go back to the history then you will see that dry needling when it started it did not start with the acupuncture needle dry needling when we started it started with injection needle then after a long long time karel levit of czechoslovakia was the first person who used dry needling using the acupuncture needle because it was uh, kind of uh, more convenient because the gaze of the needle is thin there is no hole inside the needle so there are there is virtually very minimal chance to produce any bleeding or injury and soreness so apart from the needle there is very little thing that is that is traditional acupuncture worthy then early proponents of dry needling includes kelgren in the britain chan gun of canada uh, say say uh, janet travel of usa and then as i said uh, czechoslovakia karel levit so all these people are in the western world means what dry means what dry needling did not originate from china actually if you read up the history it is very interesting uh, when the us president went to china in 1970s then one of the uh, reporters of new york times had undergone acupuncture and then he in 1970s wrote an article in new york times and that is how acupuncture got famous in the western world what i mean to say is no disrespect to acupuncture acupuncture has been around for thousands of years in china but the modern uh, or the western world got exposure to traditional chinese acupuncture in 1970s whereas dry needling if you see the history it is there since the 19th century okay so dry needling in the western world has come before acupuncture now is it unscientific so how do you uh, say that something is scientific you have to perform research and if you open any good research database starting from cochrane to uh, to google scholar to any other say pubmed any research uh, database you will see great quality rich researches in the best of the journals are validating dry needle okay so dry needling you cannot say that it is unscientific there is enough research data to back up next is it placebo i hope all of us understands what is placebo placebo means there are two doctors and you have fever and one doctor you like apni ekjon doctor ke pochondo koren and another doctor you don't like you apni oi doctor ke pochondo koren na both of them are prescribing paracetamol to you je doctor ke apni pochondo koren the doctor you love his paracetamol is going to be more effective je doctor ke apni pochondo koren na his paracetamol is going to be less effective oi paracetamol kaj korbe na to placebo means because the patient thinks that the medicine works that is why the medicine works and the doctor you you favor if he gives you vitamin c also you will feel your fever will come down because your body has your body and mind has so strong connection that because you think that he has given you the right med your body will work in that way so how do you manage this how do you nullify the effect of paracetamol nullify the effect of dry needling if you favor me as a physiotherapist and if i give you dry needling and you get benefit how can i make sure that your benefit is out of placebo benefit is not out of placebo your benefit is out of the exact exact physiological therapeutic effect of dry needling one of the answers to this is animal model no so what you can do with animal model is you create a pathology in that animal then you apply dry needling to that animal and then you kill the animal 
see the tissues under microscope and you actually see observable verifiable changes number one number two the animals most often the lab rats they do not have those higher functions like faith on the on the doctor that is a hindrance in understanding placebo in a uh, in a human model so animal models also say dry needling works and that is why uh, you can say with a lot of confidence that dry needling is useful so if it is not acupuncture if it is not uh, placebo if it is not chinese what is dry needling dry needling is a procedure where filiform filiform means solid solid needles are tapped through the skin to the target tissue to bring about a therapeutic effect so solid tissue solid needle inserted to the uh, to the to the target tissue via the skin to produce therapeutic effect that is dry needle why dry because no medicine whereas in injection where you insert the needle in the body you get medicine the other names of or variations of dry needling are intramuscular stimulation trigger point dry needling intramuscular manipulation many people call it even western acupuncture so so there are multiple names but as shakespeare has said what's in the name basically if you are inserting a needle to a target tissue to produce therapeutic benefit based upon physiological and pathological understanding of western medicine then you are performing dry needling okay uh, then what are the types of needle how many needles do we use the needles can be as short as half inch that is 12.5 mm or as long as 100 mm okay so the choice of needle will depend upon the choice of the target tissue i have used this term again and again and again target tissue so let me break it down target tissue is the tissue which you want to hit with the needle the target tissue may change most often the target tissue is a muscle okay the muscle or specifically something called as a trigger point in the muscle now but the target tissue can be some other structures also many times you target the periosteum sometimes you may target the scar tissue sometimes you may target some receptors in the skin itself and there are other target tissues as well so target tissue may change and depending upon the depth of the target tissue your choice of needle will be changed so understand this if i am thin person then to to insert the needle in say my my piriformis you may need say a 3 uh, say a, a 50 mm needle okay 2 inch needle on the other hand you have a patient who has say, say my bmi is about say 23 24 ish now you have a patient who is a very plumpy say a bmi of 40 uh, that means if you take an impression if you imagine a person who is a uh, say five feet height but the body weight is 100 kg for that person in the gluteal region there will be a lot of fat so for that person if you are trying to insert the needle in his uh, piriformis below the gluteus maximus for the same muscle you may need instead of a 2 inch needle you may need a 4 inch needle okay so the target the size of the needle will be depending upon the structure that you want to hit and secondly the depth of the tissue so the body type etc and what is a guide tube i'll show you so when you insert the needle make sure that the needle is of best quality okay you have to have the best quality needle and these are usually good needles the good needles usually come from china and the needles look like this in a strip of 5 the needle comes and these are of multiple sizes as you can see and around you can see that you have a tube plastic tube always choose needles like this where which are individually blister packed okay 
each needle has a separate pack and that is why each needle will be sterile if you remove the guide tube from the needle and discard the plastic packet how do you see you see this tube here the plastic tube you see the needle here you see the uh, you see something that holds the needle with the guide tube so you can call it as a lock and for each size of the needle you have a different size of guide tube so you have this is a 13 millimeter half inch needle this is a 25 millimeter one inch needle this is about say 40 millimeter this is one and a half inch this is a two inch needle that is 50 millimeter now the needle has various parts this is the handle of the needle this is the tip of the needle this is the shaft of the needle okay now these terms are important to understand dry needling literature and also to understand dry needling safety precaution for example when you are holding a needle you should hold the needle only through the handle you should not touch your hand in the shaft because once you touch this this part is going to the patient's body you may contaminate that area so maintenance of sterilization is very important and that is why you must understand the parts right and another important thing is this part is the junction between the shaft and the handle and if the needle ever breaks this is the most vulnerable area however a good quality needle a good quality disposable needle that is being used only once does not break at all so this is the needle like this how do you perform dry needling first you need hose, okay uh, the the root important skill of needling is like Maitland says 80% diagnosis 20% treatment same with dry needling 80% diagnosis finding the correct structure that you need to treat finding the correct direction and entry point we'll talk about the direction and entry point later and then inserting the needle safely securely okay now the exact skill of tapping the needle and inserting the needle is secondary once you learn that it will take you say a couple of uh, days to master after that what you must consider on is the diagnosis so structure you identify then the sterilized disposable needles are pierced through the skin into the target tissue the choice of needling is dependent upon the depth of the target tissue very important the choice of needling as i as i said the gluteus uh, i was talking about pyriformis the needle the koto bodo hobe how long the needle will be will be dependent upon the depth of the target tissue and what we need is a clean field technique what do you mean by clean field technique that there is no infection around there is no bacteria around uh, so so we do not need a sterile field where you also ensure that there is no virus there is no spore because the bleeding is minimal if you insert 100 needles into a patient's body hardly in five or six cases you may find a very small drop of blood that is also an overestimation if your technique is correct there is very very rarely any bleeding and how much is the blood if the patient is healthy it's just the amount of blood that a mosquito can suck actually lesser than what a mosquito can suck okay mosha kamrale joto ta rakto mosha tene na tar thekeo kom rakto beroy so the needles are kept inserted for a span of 30 seconds to few minutes and then withdrawn and very important the wind up are disposed properly many of our physiotherapists take great care of the patient and they insert the needle very properly on the patient but while bringing out the needle while disposing they prick themselves okay so that means that if the patient had hepatitis b patient had hiv patient had blood borne disease i am taking that disease in my own body that is why the disposable disposi uh, disposing part of the needle is very important and that should be standardized now what are the specific techniques in dry needling the specific techniques are named as deep dry needling superficial dry needling and needle manipulation what is deep dry needling deep dry needling is when the needle is pierced deep into the muscle tissue 
ওকে মানে আমার যদি ডেলটয়েডে পেন হয় এন্ড দ্য নিডল গোজ ইনটু দ্য ডেলটয়েড মাসল দেন ইট ইজ कॉल्ड অ্যাজ ডিপ ড্রাই নিডলিং এন্ড বিকজ আই হ্যাভ ইনসার্টেড দ্যাট স্পেসিফিক টিস্যু নিডল টু দ্য টিস্যু ইউ ইউজুয়ালি গেট সামথিং অফ আ স্মল কন্ট্রাকশন হুইচ ইজ कॉल्ड অ্যাজ এল টি আর লোকাল টুইচ রেসপন্স contrast this with something called as superficial dry needling superficial dry needling is a technique of dry needling that is started by peter baldry and peter baldry saw that sometimes you don't need to insert the needle till the muscle tissue let me give you an example suppose i am having a pain actually peter baldry started with scalenai muscle so he was trying to insert the needle to the scalenai muscle but because the scalenai muscle is very close to the pleura he was afraid that if the needle goes inside the pleura the patient is going to get pneumothorax so he just pierced the screen pierced the skin so however what happened was the patient got recovered the patient got symptom free so he understood that it is not always necessary to needle the target tissue it is possible to it is possible to to produce therapeutic effect only by needling the skin so in superficial dry needling 5 to 10 mm of the skin is pierced and it does not go to the target tissue how does it work it works because skin has so many receptors and the stimulation of the needle to the receptor via the reflex pathway uh, produces the physiological therapeutic effect then there is something called as needle manipulation needle manipulations can be periosteal pecking needle manipulation can be rotation needle manipulation can be pistoning and uh, uh, there is uh, yeah so these are these are needle manipulation techniques once you move the uh, okay so pinion periosteal pecking and there is something called as fishing okay where you insert the needle and then you try in multiple direction these are the four types of needle manip- manipulation uh, to get more physiological therapeutic effect then you can use percutaneous electrical nerve stimulation which is inserting uh, putting the needle through the putting electrical nerve stimulation that is tens through the needle because this goes through the skin it does not remain tense it becomes pens okay then this is pens pens is uh, dry needling plus tens uh, now if you ask dry needling if it works how does it work let me just give you a very brief overview of how dry needling can work uh, <clears throat> if you see the physiological effects the effects are number 1 healing effect number 2 effects on trigger points and number 3 analgesic effect so let me just talk a little bit about analgesic effect first and we'll see if there is any any more time then i'll talk about the other effects as well as advanced use of dry needling so uh, if you see this we have seen this particular picture i guess uh, most of us in india get introduced with electrotherapy looking at the book looking at this book that is clayton's electrotherapy 9th edition and in this book you see that uh, the pain pathway is like this and we use the same pain pathway we study the same pain pathway however there is an important difference which i want to distinguish that in pain this particular picture talks only about the pain fibers but it does not talk about a delta and c fiber differentiation let me just break it down a little for you the pain as we know is uh, is perceived in the periphery if it is a slow pain it a delta picks up if it is a sorry if it is a fast pain a delta picks up if it is a so, slow pain then c fibers pick up and then in the spinal cord both of them goes through the the spinal cord and the slow pain is like a local train so there are many 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 stops the fast pain however is an express train so it directly goes through the lateral spinothalamic tract 
to the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and then from thalamus to somatosensory cortex primarily which is area number 312 however the slow pain has multiple stops substantia gelatinosa then wide, wide dynamic range of neurons then via the multisynaptic uh, system to a retic to the reticular formation area where there are multiple uh, which is a diffused uh, kind of uh, set of neurons in the brain stem then it goes to thalamus and actually both of them are lateral spinothalamic tract but you can call this as neospinothalamic tract you can call this as paleospinothalamic tract so there are actually two types of pain a delta myelinated fast pain c unmyelinated slow pain why there are two types of pain because a delta pain is the pain to alert you from the exterior so when say say you are being bitten by a mosquito or a in discovery channel a lion is biting or scratching a zebra then you must react immediately otherwise the lion will kill the zebra the mosquito will suck all the blood out of you so so that this information reaches the brain immediately that you that is why you have a fast pain so you must kill the mosquito immediately or zebra should start running immediately so that he can protect himself from the lion then why do you have the slow pain because the slow pain is to tell you that there is something wrong that is going on inside your body for the zebra the zebra must know that he is still vulnerable because of the injury by the lion so he next day he will not go out into the grazing or ghash khete jabe na ek din rest nebe because in that day in the next day if i am vulnerable or the zebra is vulnerable the zebra is a soft target for the lion next day the lion will come back and he will target that injured zebra again and that is why this c pain is there to tell the zebra that there is some problem and we are evolved from a lower animal so we also have inherited uh, all this all this kind of pain pathway but what happens if if the zebra is being targeted on a second day also with the lion no it it can also happen no suppose the zebra is uh, now not not going out he is still in his own land but a lion comes what happens what happens if i am a footballer and uh, and i have injury but still my coach wants me to play or if it is the final, final of the tournament then i need to overcome that pain and and evolution nature god has given us the process of overcoming the pain by giving a natural pain killing mechanism what is that now i am going to pain inhibition by dry needling i am going to talk about the same picture this this blue and violet is still remaining i have added some more connections if you can see the green connections so now the zebra once the zebra starts starts running again looking at the lion he will his own pain killer mechanism is going to work and we are using that same painkiller mechanism by introducing a sharp pain that is the needle here the dry needle is going to stimulate the a delta again you know no when you insert when you are pricked by a needle you will get a sharp pain when the zebra runs because he had the injury by the line he will get a sharp pain when the footballer starts to play he will get a sharp pain the soldier in the battlefield he has already got a gunshot but if he leaves then his motherland is going to be captured so he will also have this uh, pain killer mechanism and when i insert the needle in the patient's body the patient is also the benefit of this pain killer mechanism what happens first the a delta pathway gives a collateral to the stalked cells in the spinal cord which inhibits the substantia gelatinosa so how by release of n kefalin what is n kefalin n kefalin is an endogenous opiate so it is the segmental modulation then it is not the only the segmental modulation is not the only solution also from mid brain the periaqueductal gray matter is stimulated which in turn stimulates the nucleus refi magnus of medulla which releases serotonin to the stock cell and we know stock cell inhibits the substantia gelatinosa so once the sgr is inhibited what happens 
I said this is a local train. The, st the train stops here, so the C pain is not felt. Then, the noradrenergic system is when the collateral goes to nucleus paragigantocellularis, from them locus coruleus of pons, then noradrenaline is secreted into the substantia gelatinosa. What it means that all this time, last two procedures, only encephalin was used as an end stimulation to subs, uh, or inhibition to substantia gelatinosa. Here, one more neurochemical nor noradrenaline is added and it inhibits the substantia gelatinosa again. So the C pain is stopped, the slow pain is stopped. And finally, something called as DNIC, diffuse noxious inhibitory system, inhibitory control. It kind of uh, gets, uh, stimulates the uh, medulla, the reticularis dorsalis, and it inhibits the uh, inhibits the substantia gelatinosa again. Then there are certain healing effects. What are the healing effects? This was the painkiller effect. The healing effects are immediately after the needle is introduced into the skin, there are evidence of increased capillary permeability and there is local rapid vasodilatation. That is not on the skin, but inside the tissue, there is vasodilatation. Then there are uh, release of cortisol. There are something called as galvanotaxis, which is polarity directed cell migration of the important cells like, like fibroblasts, like macrophages, which aids to the healing. And then rotation of the needle can be, can be performed, which, which sort of helps in straightening of the collagen tissue. Uh, it also releases cortisol. I'm rushing a little. So what you can do is you can you can stop the trigger point by releasing these contracting knots. Basically, you can break down the dysfunctional motor end plates, which were creating the the neuromuscular junction contraction, the the uh, the contraction knots, and then you can these are collagen. So you can realign the collagen and you can mobilize the scar tissue here. And then there are studies now by, but mostly by someone called as Pablo Herrero of Italy, who has copyrighted a technique called as DNHS, uh, dry needling for hypertonicity and spasticity. He is working very nice with spasticity. But you must follow a procedure to perform dry needling. Uh, first of all, you must assess, and this is my humble effort, humble contribution to the field of dry needling, where I have designed a dry needling assessment form, because it is very important to understand the contraindications, the precautions. So the absolute contraindications will be if the patient is not giving uh, consent, if the patient has history of reaction in dry needling, if the patient is in heavy dose of either anticoagulant therapy or immunosuppression therapy, <clears throat> if the patient is having lymphedema. Sometimes there are, there are relative contraindications. For example, if the patient is having COPD, you don't want to needle around the chest wall. If the patient is having implant, you don't want to touch the implant. And then, then once you list down all the contraindications, you tick them, you take precautions which are physician's opinion, take the physician's permission, and if, if necessary, take a BTCT, breathing time, clotting time, and you then educate the patient, take, take informed consent here, and then you can use this for five different structures or five different days. And then you can also report the patient if the patient had any adverse effect. Okay, so uh, if you are practicing dry needling, if you need this form, uh, mail me or uh, send me a WhatsApp, I'll be able to give you the uh, PDF of this. You also take, uh, must take a consent form and take the appropriate precaution like this gentleman who, who has taken precautions before approaching the lady. And then I have created an acronym called as SPIDER. This is to remind ourselves of the precautions that the precaution that the helmet that the shield that we must wear before dry needling when i say helmet and shield that is figurative figure of speech uh, s is for surface anatomy so 
understanding the surface anatomy is of optimum importance so that you do not you know what is the underlying structure and you must avoid going into the underlying structure for example uh, if you are needling the for example for costochondritis there is very high amount of chance that you go inside the lung and create a pneumothorax which is a very painful if not fatal condition life risk condition then position of the patient is also important position of the needle is also important <clears throat> when you position the patient for example you must have done uh, practice this when you understood when you studied manual therapy or when you practice manual therapy when the patient keeps in prone lying hands on the side compare this when the patient keeps the hand below the head the trapezius changes its position the scapula changes its position so whatever are the patient position is very important position of the needle is also important no for example you are trying to needle the sternomastoid muscle here now if you position the needle a, a little medial or if you position the little a little say superior inferior you have the you have the risk of going into the carotid or going into the jugular carotid is uh, theoretically possible but the carotid sheath is very strong so practically it is not that risky but jugular can be easily say uh, you can go to jugular very easily so so position of the needle is very important the term incidence angle i have borrowed from physics law of reflection law of refraction so it means that at what angle you are inserting the needle understand this inserting the needle in say say you are right next to the spinous process of the vertebra now say you are 1 cm away from the spinous process you are targeting towards the midline you will reach multifidus you are targeting lateral to the midline you may reach pleura create pneumothorax kill the patient at least theoretically possible so at what angle you are inserting is also important other than the position also then the depth of the needle is very important no so you are for example uh, needling the pectoralis major here in the inter in the over the rib now ideally we should be needling the pectoralis major over the rib but imagine you have made a mistake and the needle is going inside between the ribs and first you will encounter the pectoralis major then the intercostals then if you are unlucky more than you if the patient is unlucky you are in the mid clavicular line you are in the fourth intercostal space you will go 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 and you may even end up touching the patient's heart at least the pericardium theoretically at least so that is how important it is to judge and consider the depth depth of the target tissue and the depth of your needle then very important is to educate the patient after needling there are certain things that you should do certain things that you should not do uh, otherwise the patient may end up having severe uh, post needling complication and finally the recording of the session is very important for which we have this dry needling assessment form so based upon this spider theory there is actually a basic standard protocol of how to approach dry needling technique which uh, should be followed very diligently and finally many times what happens is that uh, when you have patients uh, when you learn a technique for the first time you end up treating all the patients using the same technique so please understand that dry needling is just one uh, one arm or one 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 gun in your arsenal so you have to choose uh, intelligently you have to choose appropriately not all the patients are good candidates of dry needling dry needling when you apply diligently with proper understanding and patient discretion it works wonders i don't want to use the word magic because this is science but what you can achieve with 10 sessions of manual therapy or hands on therapy some not all the time sometimes you can achieve in one session however please understand that we are not needling therapist 
we are physiotherapists physical therapists so there are so many conditions that that needs number 1 that does not need dry needling number 2 all the pets all the time need something more than dry needling we should not treat the patient with only needling and send the patient home okay dry needling is is a good kit to have a good skill to have but there every patient needs something beyond dry needling so if you are treating the patient with dry needling please give the patient other than dry, dry needling also what the patient needs and then always treat the root cause beyond the patient's symptom what is on the surface and then uh, to sum up with proper discretion dry needling is a powerful tool in the hands of a physiotherapist quick cost effective treatment which indicate which when indicated produce immediate result single session will get a result but the risks are real so there is the need and training of safety needs for training and safety precautions this cannot be over emphasized so that's all i wanted to share about dry needling uh, and go into discussion thank you if there is any question i would be happy to take that if there is any question any query if there is anything else please let me know yeah uh, thank you doctor and uh, i think it's a nice uh, presentation nice explanation and uh, most of the time our physios they want to see the technique directly but i think it's uh, more effective on hands on because better you can understand the basic but when the corona uh, situation will be over so there may be a chance of uh, practical session so without that i think invasive approach is sometimes is uh, not uh, i think it not good for directly practice only uh, shall i share, the, shall uh, video of dry needling technique yeah yeah you can you can sh sh okay share that will be uh, great i'm not sure if the audio audio will come but i will share the video and uh, let me see okay if it is yes if the audio and is some post okay some question is coming so you can uh, throw that uh, you can share the video and we can give give the answer also okay right right great uh, that is uh, shajia sheik she is asking about the can we treat for migraine pain by trying it okay uh, just give me a moment as i share the screen and after okay. that i'll talk about it yes Okay, three nice questions. Okay. Are we seeing the video? Uh, audio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, your share. Everything is okay. Okay, now we can go for a question. The audio is coming. No audio of is the video. Coming. No. okay okay so what we are doing is we are uh, trying to needle the vestus medialis muscle okay we'll have to understand where is the femoral artery and we'll have to uh, understand that uh, where the fem how the femoral artery can be avoided okay after that we can needle the vestus uh, medialis uh, just uh, see the needle insertion and then we'll uh, go back to the question of migraine so the needle is directed downwards because upwards there may be the artery the artery will be uh, in the uh, it will be present in the upper two third in lower one third it will become the popliteal artery and it will go back so directing the needle downwards minimizes the risk
uh, as per okay. joint, joint now the yeah and being having the gloves now i'll stop share and i'll take the question then okay yes, so uh, one of our participant she is asking about the can we treat migraine through trinary okay okay now migraine is a like cerebral is an umbrella term okay now there are many cases in which in migraine there is a trigger point component that can be very easily treated okay especially the temporalis muscle for people who are having bruxism can be can be uh, released with needle and there are uh, if if the primary problem of the or a significant component of the migraine is uh, trigger point dry needling can be the primary form of therapy however if migraine is uh, not having as much trigger point component then migraine can still be treated but it will be an adjunct form of therapy or it will be a, a form of painkiller non uh, pharmacological painkiller that is uh, kind of that is dry needling okay so if there is trigger point migraine can be treated and successfully long term benefit will be obtained if there is no trigger point then dry needling will work as a painkiller another question from rahul dash that is is it is uh, work uh, working in uh, spasticity okay uh, for the longest time we used to consider spasticity as a neurological disorder spasticity is still a neurological disorder but we understand that in spasticity we have a mechanical component okay so the mechanical component of the spasticity can be addressed with dry needling the explanation the physiological explanation is a little longish but i will strongly encourage read up the literature by pablo herrero who has pioneered in the treatment of spasticity with dry needling he has a clear cut protocol of six steps what are the things that you need to do thank you uh, another question from uh, mamad irshad ali uh, he is asking about why uh, cannot apply dry needle in case of lymphedema okay great uh, lymphedema is an absolute local contraindication of dry needling what happens with lymphedema is when you insert the needle the healing is not as proper and the and the clotting mechanism and everything does not uh, work very nicely because there is an interface of lymphatic fluid so there is a chance of infection the wound does not close properly there is a chance of infection in the lymphatic uh, limb where we have inserted the needle and that is why in any form of medicine the first principle is do no harm even with uh, corona trials no we are having these vaccines but unless it is completely tried and tested and we understand there is no side effect we don't want to do that similar reason lymphedema there are chances of infection so but but if my patient has say lymphedema in the right lower limb i will not hesitate to needle him in the upper limb so it is a local contraindication Uh, thank you another question from ishad ali that is how many type of trigger point we have this how many types of how many? trigger point trigger yes. point so trigger point is classified separately you know and trigger point term has been used by different authors with different meaning so as of now for the very basic understanding of that we can call two types active and latent trigger point a latent trigger point is which is not spontaneously painful and an active trigger point which is spontaneously painful a latent trigger point of uh, for example is present in our uh, extensor digitorum if you do a transverse palpation you will see the fingers start jumping you know because we have a latent trigger point an active trigger point when the trigger point is giving pain spontaneously in the in the specific radiation pattern okay then you have primary trigger point secondary trigger point satellite trigger point then there are other trigger points which are non muscular trigger point for example some people say that there are trigger points also in the ligaments uh, but primarily with our basic understanding of active and latent trigger point we can go ahead with dry needling okay uh, rajesh suresh babu he is asking about the 
PA shoulder, the position of dry needle. I think it's a cross, right? Not a single term may be possible, okay. like for okay. PA shoulder. Yeah. For PA shoulder. All right. So primarily, if there is pain and if you are practicing dry needling for the first time, go for superficial dry needling or needle the deltoid muscle. Then the muscle that is most uh, uh, commonly involved in PA shoulder is subscapularis. But the needling of the subscapularis is very tricky because the muscle is like that uh, is sandwiched between your scapula and the rib cage. Teres major is another muscle. Teres major uh, is usually involved, and then all the muscles in and around the shoulder is uh, affected over a period of time when dry needling, when when uh, periarterial shoulder uh, becomes chronic. So primarily, you must look at uh, the subscapularis muscle. Okay. So I think it's, uh, for subscapularis muscle, the technique will be more uh, different and little bit tough. Than yes. I think. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, one thing I want to say is, there are certain structures which can be needled very easily. There are certain structures that need a lot of precision. So, if you are needling in the initial days till your confidence builds, you can do two things. One is stay superficial. That is, use superficial dry needling. And second, when in doubt, stay out. Do not insert the needle. There are so many other forms of non-invasive therapy. Have faith in what you have, whatever you have studied in your four to six years of uh, uh, university education. Dry needling is not the only form of it of therapy that uh, we know, right? So that's it. Yeah. Another uh, one of our participants, Physio uh, Robin Hussain, is uh, asking about uh, uh, that is dry needle. Dry needle can be uh, used on. That is uh, Bell's palsy. Yes. Bell's palsy. Uh, not not as a direct or the only form of therapy. However, dry needling releases cortisol. Okay. And Bell's palsy, the clinical therapeutic treatment is is methylprednisolone. So. In many cases, in dry needling, there had been documented benefit in Bell's palsy, but uh, still, it can be used as an adjunct, not the primary form of therapy. Uh, another uh, question from uh, Shajia Sheikh. She is asking about the uh, dry needling. Is uh, like uh, it is uh, can be done on the diabetic patient. Maybe she is asking about oh, which is the level. Then we can uh, insulin level or that is glucose yes. level. So Correct. then we can Correct. use that. Yeah, that very important question. Yeah. So basically, if the patient is fit for taking injection, then the patient is fit for taking dry needle also. Okay. The risk is uh, to prevent infection, right? If there is too much of uh, uh, high level of sugar, you insert the needle, the wound does not close because of impaired healing mechanism and then infection happens. That is the primary fear. But because this is un, a very little minimally invasive form of therapy, you can insert in the patients who are fit for injection. Okay. So uh, sometimes I heard that is if the fasting blood sugar is 9 or below 16. So is there any strict rules like fasting blood sugar between that? Fasting blood sugar below? Uh, below 16. 16 millimole or something. On 6. Okay. In the uh, so this particular uh, value, no, that is 9 or 16, mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, HBS, uh, HB, what is it? A1C. Yeah, so that is actually not instantaneous. So that gives uh, an average of a long period. So at uh, you'll get more like uh, there are certain other factors also in consideration. What is the age of the patient? How how is the general health of the patient? And all what is the skin condition? They all will take uh, like uh, be be a consideration. Only a specific value 
uh, usually is not enough. not enough you know because we know certain young people who also have high high blood sugar level and we know certain people elderly and they have they suffer from uh, sugar or diabetes not as high so in the young person's case i will still go ahead with nidu and if the person is elderly population with comorbidity i will restrict nidu so another question on my from my experience like uh, after dry needle uh, like is in the field of sports or maybe i have asked you before is during sports or during game if it is muscle uh, that is the contract uh, contraction or muscle spasm instantly muscle spasm mm -hmm. so uh, we can use dry needle and then allow the patient to play it is possible if it is lower limb yes why not if it is anywhere around the chest wall chest no wall? okay so another thing is if like a uh, big muscle like quadriceps or hamstring so how many needle we can put along the leg at a time right so so there are different various conventions now uh, dr yun tao ma who has uh, popularized uh, a specific concept of needle say that between two needle one centimeter gap on the other hand studies say that when you insert a needle and rotate the needle the change in the myofascial fibers happens up to up to about 2 uh, inches away from the needle 5 cm away from the needle so maximum gap keep 2 inches minimum gap keep 1 cm that should be the thumb rule i think uh, already we have uh, closed already we have closed on our so i think you have also another session so now people are giving thanks to our program and uh, dr shami will going to share that feedback link already i have shared on our whatsapp group so uh, uh, so from there you can complete your feedback and then you can access your certificate for today so i think uh, already one hour gone so i think today we have to stop and dr shuman janda she is our friend and advisor also so yeah we can get him again but uh, sorry for that people are very uh, yeah, that is they are interested on dry needle direct practical approaches to see how they are working but it is tough because it's a invasive approach i think hands on hands on hands on program will be the more ethical rather than showing videos or you can see on google lot of technique there but uh, it's uh, first time you should practice under the guideline of any uh, senior pgs so i think today we can finish now yeah right so, thank you so much uh, yeah. once again so give give any uh, suggestion to our physio or any other for this uh, webinar or anything so you can end, end the session thanks dr dr you, you can conclude now so by your speech i think you can conclude so dr shobhan jan yes yes okay uh, okay you just continue yeah. can you hear me you can Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being such an inquisitive, attentive audience. And thank you for your uh, hospital. Uh, thank you for uh, such nice introductions. I am still a student, as you can see my credentials. And even if I uh, complete my, my present uh, PhD, I will still remain a student of physiotherapy. I learn every day. And uh, in this endeavor, Physio News 24 has uh, always uh, help me to learn new things exciting things and uh, things that that uh, come from various corners of the world uh, keep watching physio news 24 for uh, all all the new and exciting and uh, and the current uh, approaches i i am uh, happy to be here thank you very much good night shubharatri thank you thank you dhanyabad shobai ke shubharatri